Hi everyone, it's Barbara and I'm here today with Chris Caswell from Georgia and he's going to give us some real insightful information from his studies about different diseases and foods that he knows will help them. So Chris, we're excited. Can you tell us what you've learned about diseases and foods? Okay, what I've, what I've uh, come to understand is a lot of the diseases that we have uh, in America is usually due to something that either you put in the body or something the body hasn't got. When it's you know, nutrition or chemicals from processed foods. And I tend to call it either we're deficient or we're toxic. So diseases are mostly created, there's only really kind of one disease which has all these symptoms and it's either toxicity or deficiency. So Chris is going to elaborate on that. So thank you, Chris. One of the things that you uh, want to look at is, is some of the, on, on some of the foods. Like for example, if you look at um, wheat, okay, today's wheat isn't the same wheat that was in your grandma's biscuits or whatever you know many years ago. Okay, 1960 at the University of Minnesota they modified the wheat plant, and so during the modification, it, it has the gluten protein in it. Okay, the wheat causes inflammation in the body and some people you know might go many years and never have any any problems and then eventually you know they start experiencing problems whether it's uh, headaches whether it's uh, nausea whether they uh, have a mental fall like you know the, their mind just kind of shuts down for you know for you know 45 minutes to an hour um, so it just depending on the individual um, they, they, you know, they may experience one or more of the symptoms, you know, during their life. Um, another thing that's in the, say, processed foods is um, high fructose corn syrup. Well, what the high fructose corn syrup does to you, in addition to the wheat, is it causes blood sugar spikes. Well, every time you cause a blood sugar rise in the body, the body's pancreas has to produce the insulin, okay? Eventually, after years and years of abuse of uh, blood sugar spikes, whether you know, you're eating refined sugar like the bag sugar you buy at the grocery store or you're getting the blood sugar rise from the wheat or whether you're getting it from packaged items that have high, high fructose corn syrup in them. This um, causes the pancreas to work, you know, harder and harder each, you know, each time you, you do this. Well, eventually the pancreas can't keep up with the amount of sugar that's building up in the body. And so as this, this occurs, you start running into um, high sugar levels, which gets you into diabetes. Right. Okay. Another symptom. Okay. As, 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 as the diabetes um, escalates, and also you'll notice it's a person that has diabetes generally has got extra weight, extra pounds along the waistline, yeah. hips, or wherever. Well, as this escalates, if you, if you don't fix this problem, your cardiovascular system starts to fail. Eventually, the, the, you know, the arteries, they, they start to uh, become hardened mm -hmm. because they can't, you know, absorb the calcium and as this, as this begins to happen, they get inflamed and so the body will start to produce, like the liver will start to produce plaque and it kind of um, builds up along the walls to, to, to keep you from essentially bleeding out because if the uh, artery actually um, exploded, you, you know, you'd have, you know, an aneurysm, you'd bleed out or whatever, and depending on where it is, you'll die. As the heart disease escalates, generally a lot of the doctors they'll, they'll want to uh, tell you to watch your cholesterol levels and things, but it wasn't the cholesterol that caused the problem. It was essentially the blood sugar spikes. Right. You know whether whether it was you know wheat or high fructose corn syrup, and those blood sugar spikes over the years is what's got you into you know into essentially into the heart disease, and that's where they go into doing the bypass. So as the doctor says, hey, I'm gonna put you on. Um, statin drugs and once you to, you know, don't eat any meat and everything pretty much dealing with cholesterol, he wants you to leave it alone. He's, what he's essentially doing is leading you down to Alzheimer's and then as that escalates you get into dementia because your body can only produce 10% of the mind that it, you know, and, uh, that it requires. But it requires more than just, you know, the 10%. So you have to eat things that have cholesterol, you have to have meats to accommodate this, 
the reason why the myelin is important is because it, um, it coats your nerve ending fibers and it's 75% of your brain. And so when you don't, you know, when you don't have the proper nutrition, you can kind of see how everything escalates. You, know, you go from obesity to uh, diabetes to heart disease and heart disease to Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's and dementia. You know, it's essentially, you know, each step that you're taking is essentially your body is warning you to say, hey, if you don't make, you know, choices in your diet, you're going to die. Right. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, it's the food that's killing you. If, if you don't, you know, if you're not eating something that's giving you, giving you nutrition, then you just, you're deficient. And it leads to all of the other problems. So basically, Kristen, what would you recommend? Of course, we want to stay away from the standard American diet. So are you recommending no sugar, no wheat? What's your recommendation? What have you found from your studies? Well, I pretty much, I like to try try things out on myself first, you know, before I really run somebody down a path. Okay. And so what I've what essentially, for you? what I've essentially done is, is Say for example, you know, I get a sweet tooth because everybody does. Right. I, I'll take, you know, honey and peanut butter and I'll mix a little bit of it up and, I, and I'll essentially eat that and then, you know, I'll drink some water and essentially that, that sugar craving you had, it'll go away. If I don't have any honey or peanut butter, then I'll essentially get an apple or an orange or something because it's got a natural uh, fructose in it, right, that's not harmful to the body. But keep in mind when you go to eat the fruits and vegetables, you want to make sure you know they're, they're organic because some of these things are genetically modified and so that modification a lot of times you don't know necessarily what you're putting in your body and so naturally if you're not taking nature the way it was then you know you're liable to compromise your health because if you, you know if you kind of realize what comes from the ground you know obviously is the way you want to take it because you essentially came from the ground as well and so you essentially want to eat things that come from the ground. And it's the same thing with like uh, livestock, for example. Um, if, you, if you go buy and, uh, meat and things from the local grocery store, you don't know essentially what you're getting. And so you may be you know, risking getting uh, steroids, you know, that they feed the animals sometimes. Just Antibiotics. Before, just before the slaughter, they'll um, fatten them up with a bunch of grain. Well, this grain, is modified grain, everything that that animal is eating, that's essentially what you're putting in your body. Exactly. Hmm. And so generally what I usually do is I go to a butcher and I'll buy so much um, meat and that's usually where I get my meat source from. And essentially it's, you know, farmers that naturally raise the animals. And so that way I know that, you know, what I'm getting is, is good quality things. And Another thing that uh, is, is important is, is if you have like sugar problems or you're trying to, you know, um, let's say for instance you're a person that, that, that takes vitamins and things, you essentially know that those, those vitamins didn't necessarily can't come from the ground if they're manufactured. So you don't really know the quality of those. So if you kind of study what, um, where to get your, you know, your different vitamins, whether it's vitamin A, vitamin C, and essentially eat the good quality foods that will give you those, uh, those, um, that nutrition, then you'll find that you'll have less health problems. Because essentially, if you, if you don't follow those things, and let's say you go to the doctor and he gives you a prescription, well, you're paying either way, regardless of whether you're getting health or whether you get nutrition. And essentially, if you're going to him and he's giving you something to suppress symptoms, then who's to, you know who's to say that uh, that you're getting something for it? I mean, if, you, if, if you're not fixing the problem, then you're essentially creating another problem that you'll have to deal with later. So you're going to pay for it one way or another, either in the beginning or in the end. So. We want to make sure that in the beginning we're doing the right things to combat all the problems that come from eating the wrong things. Is that basically what you mean, Chris? Yes. Okay. And what, what my requirements for me to keep a healthy life may be different from you because my body may, you know, for example, I have taken more potassium. Or you, you might need, you know, more vitamin C. So, you know, essentially to figure that out, 
you need to do some blood work to kind of see what levels you're deficient in. And so you can do a series of blood tests and determine, you know, kind of where you are. And that way you can make a, you know, a real good decision as far as, you know, how you may need to adjust your diet. But when, when you decide to adjust your diet, if you know you have 20 bad things, you need to probably start with one or two. Get past the one or two things and then, you know, essentially work on the others because if you're trying to change everything overnight, it's going to seem overwhelming. It's just like anything new you'll ever learn. So I always just encourage people to take it, you know, a step at a time. And when you get one thing complete, then you move to the next thing. You know, the, the same way you, you, you learn anything else you do in your life. You know, you came in this world not learning, you know, not knowing anything, and so you got to take a chance, you know, to, to, to learn something each day to become better. I love that simple advice. Isn't that how we do everything, one step at a time? And that's a great reminder for all of us, Chris. So anything else that you would like to add, or does that pretty well sum it up? <clears throat> well, you know what? Thank you so much. You've been a really encouragement to me, and I hope to you. Chris has given us some awesome advice on nutrition and just encouraging you to take the extra step to find out what is unique to you, what you need individually, and make it simple. Start with the first few steps that you need. Um, to help by getting the right nutrients that you need for that problem and just one step at a time and grow one day at a time and pretty soon um, as Chris is a testimonial that you know your life can change he's lost 30 35 pounds in a very short period of time just by changing his diet and it started by this day changing what he put in his mouth a little by little and then before you know it it adds up to a big thing. And so I want to encourage you to do the same. So thanks for listening. Bye.